I, I did chemistry at college. I joined Smith, Klein and French uh, back in the in the eighties. Uh, it's now GSK. I worked there as a as a chemist uh, for three years uh, in uh, supplying clinical uh, demand, and from there I, I moved into business development. Uh, after about three years, and I've been doing business development ever since then. Forty years ago, the CMO market uh, was very much smaller. Um, tiny, in fact, uh, compared to today. We've just come out of CPHI, um, which is a huge show. Back 40 years ago, it was two rooms, two small rooms. Uh, you probably knew everybody uh, who was in there. So it, it, was, it was just just very much smaller. It was, I, I think, characterized by uh, companies who had very specific technologies, very specific reactions even uh, to, um, uh, to offer. And it was much less about multi-step and GMP and APIs and so on. It was really just all about getting some chemistry done on a very specific technology level. Yeah, so key milestones, I, I think uh, from innovative uh, pharma companies coming to suppliers for their technologies and being innovative, to going beyond that to, hey, now we want you to uh, be quality driven, we want you to make things to, to a recipe, effectively drove out innovation. That meant that they went, hey, we might as well just for cost advantages, that allows India, to some extent China, later on into the uh, equation that hits its issues uh, for quality reasons back to the West. That coincides anyway with uh, more uh, outsourcing. In the meantime, uh, pharmaceutical companies not investing and saying, hey, so now we're back to needing innovation. So we need the suppliers to invest and, and develop hypo and fly, flow chemistry, biocatalysis, uh, whatever. So I think it's sort of gone full circle. Uh, I, I think we can look forward to some good times uh, in the industry. Uh, I think whether you're a biologics uh, a supplier or a chemical supplier, I think the pipelines for both of those uh, uh, technologies look good. For someone like Cambrex, where we, we divested everything in biologics and focused on, on small molecules, uh, we think it looks great. There are more products in clinical trials than ever. Uh, there are more products moving from one phase uh, of clinical trials and progressing towards the market than, than ever. Um, and the pharmaceutical companies are, are back to us looking for a quality organization who can also bring innovation, but also flexibility and reliability. Uh, and uh, if you study the market enough and you look at uh, what is needed uh, in terms of capacity to cover the type of ranges that the customers need, then I think you can look forward to a, as bright a future as, as there's been perhaps for, for 10 years. Uh, so yeah, I think the next five years are, are gonna be great. After 30, 40 years, a, a lot of things have been tried, but, but it, it's sort of conventional. You, know, you have a buyer, you have a, a seller, and they sit across the table from each other and, and, and do a transaction. Um, and I, I think if, if the industry really wants to get better, uh, then it, you, you have to lose some of that sort of one-off transactional uh, type of thing, almost to the point where maybe you don't need a CPHI. Um, you're going to be work. You, hopefully, you'll be working with uh, customers really on an intimate basis. I think one of the biggest challenges that our industry has always faced is demand forecast. Uh, and, and I think the pharma companies are, are getting better at, at releasing that, but I think our industry has got better at forecasting as well. So we don't just sit there and take forecasts from a pharma company as read anymore. We try to do our own work as well. But I think um, you know, the more we move away from a buyer and a purchaser and a team and, and go towards a team at the, the pharma customer and a team at the supplier, really looking at the demand and what might happen and what, and what technologies are going to come through so that we're more prepared together, then, then the better it will be. And, and that, that, I think, is one thing that we really have to do. And everybody has been talking about dropping the barriers and being a partner and being a strategic partner and in a relationship. But I, I don't think it's ever really got there because uh, you've really got to open, uh, be much more open than, than anybody has been to date.
CPHI is the most important, I, I would say, uh, uh, over the year, uh, simply because it gives us the, the best platform for uh, really marketing Cambrex, getting our brand out there, uh, who are we, what do we do, and it has got the, the biggest audience uh, of the year. So if we want to reach people that we wouldn't normally reach, then, then a show like CPHI is, is really a, a great place to do that. So we mentioned uh, some of the opportunities for, for the industry and how things are looking pretty good uh, for the next few years. But, but I think uh, there are some challenges and it's up to the CMO industry. It's, to me, it's almost in our own hands to make sure that that happens. Because to me, I think a lot is about capacity and the flexibility of that capacity, if, if you like. Um, but with the pharmaceutical companies coming back to the West from the East, then, and with the number of NCEs that are in the pipeline, then there's going to be a need for more capacity. Uh, some capacity had closed down, some pharmaceutical companies have closed down their capacity. So it's up to us to, to put that capacity in place. And it needs to be the right capacity, it needs to be flexible. You need to really look at and proactively look into the pipelines about what is needed. Um, if we don't do that, I think the pharmaceutical company who's biggest concern I've seen over the years is capacity and available capacity. If they don't see it coming on stream, they're going to go back into build mode themselves. Um, so it's in our own hands. If, if we take that worry away from them, I think we'll have a good time. And if we don't, then maybe we won't. <laughs>